When a reevaluation is needed for a student, you have three options. This can be found under evaluation and reeval decision making. So for a reevaluation, there are three options. One, you complete a reevaluation that only reviews existing data, so you do not gather anything new. Two, you do both a review of evaluation data and you gather some new data. Or three, you waive the reevaluation completely as agreed upon by the district and the parent. So this flowchart will help you walk through those different steps and what they all mean. There are some situations in which a waived evaluation cannot happen. So up in this top box, these are some pieces. If the student is aging out of developmental delay, so they're turning seven, if they are in grades seven, eight, or nine, if they are being considered for a dismissal of services completely, or if they're being considered for a different disability category because their needs have changed significantly, or finally, if their last evaluation was waived. So if you answer yes to any of those, then an evaluation is needed. You do need to complete an evaluation. If you're able to answer no to all of those, then it goes down into further. Is a student anticipated to graduate this year or age out of services in the next one to two years? If so, then you can consider a reevaluation or a waived evaluation. If no, can you answer these questions? So you have to be able to answer the four questions in this box. Whether they continue to have a disability, whether they continue to have a need for special education services, you have to know what their present levels of performance are, and you have to know whether any additions or modifications are needed to their students' programming. If you can answer yes to all of those questions, and the parents agree that an evaluation is not needed, you can then waive that evaluation. So really these four questions here in the middle are a key component as to whether you can move forward with a waived evaluation. Parental consent is required, or if the student is 18 and their own guardian, they need to consent to this. And again, they cannot be in any of the situations up above here. If they do need an evaluation, then you go through and determine a couple of more steps. You need to determine whether you can review all of your existing information fully or whether you need to gather some new evaluations. So this just walks through on the flowchart what those different pieces are. The color coding helps you see which piece that you need to do or which are your next steps here. Going back to case manager resources, it then dives down deeper into each of these areas. So for these four questions, you have to have existing data, which includes this information here. And then each of these questions dives into those pieces further. So does the student continue to have a disability under IDEA? Talks about what this looks like and what you need to consider. And same with all of the other questions, you have to be able to answer all four of those questions. Then, if through the flowchart you determine that option one is what you're going to do, here are the directions for how option one works. So option one is a reevaluation that's just a review of the existing information. So what you're going to do is you're going to review the most recent information you have on the student, making sure that you're including all relevant team members, including speech language pathologists, occupational therapists, physical health disability teachers, physical therapists, school nurses, school psychs, anyone that's on the student's team. You're going to review the data and determine, and if they all agree that the programming is working and nothing newly is needed, you can then do the review of existing information. Your next step then would be to contact parents to gather input on their present levels of needs. And then you would notify parents through a prior written notice. So that would be through the evaluation plan prior written notice that you were doing a reeval for review of existing information. You're then going to complete the evaluation report within 30 day clock once you get that parental consent. And then there are two options for the eval templates that you can choose in SPED forms. Either one of these, depending on whether the student is pre seventh grade or seventh grade or later. 
Here's an example prior written notice for what that would look like if you were reviewing existing data. As you see here, the sources of information are pretty minimal because you are only reviewing academic, social, emotional, and post-secondary information. Option number two is that you're gonna do a reevaluation with new data collected. So there are some certain situations where this may happen, where you have some information that you need, but you have other areas where you wanna gather some more information. Um, you maybe have a student who needs a transition evaluation, but you're good on all of the other pieces. You know what they need academically, you know what they need social emotionally, but you need to do transition assessments. So you can review the academic and social emotional information and gather new secondary transition information. So this piece here walks through what report you would choose for this section and what that would look like. So again, this would be a still an evaluation plan that you would complete. You would send that home for parental signature and complete it within 30 days. And then you can choose the reevaluation review of existing data template and pull in the specific tools that you would need um, into that report in SPED forms. Option number three with a reevaluation is that you would agree to waive an evaluation. So if you work through the flowchart and you see that an option to waive is appropriate for your student, then here are what you can do. So you need to be able to answer those four questions and then you would contact the parent. So before this review of the existing information would happen, you're gonna contact the parent and let them know that you're thinking that an evaluation is not needed for their child. Talk about why you reached that decision um, and, say, and why the district feels that that option is appropriate. If the parent agrees, then you're gonna complete the notice of agreement that a three-year reevaluation is not needed form in SPED forms. It's quite a long name for a form, but that is the full name of that form. You're gonna then send that form home for consent. Once we get consent, then you can do step four, which is just a little tiny kind of workaround that we need to do in SPED form system so that your front page does not show up as a red um, red stop sign anymore for this student that it'll show up as a green check. So if you're waving, you're going to contact parents, get their consent, send home that form, get their consent, and then you're going to reconcile that SPED form system and then you can waive that evaluation. Here's the form and what that looks like and the details of it. So you'd put the note, the date here that you send it to the parents. The next date that you put on here is the date that you talked to the parents. And then you're going to list what their primary disability is or secondary disability as appropriate. And then the date of their last evaluation. On the bottom of this page, you'll see the frequently asked questions that you can go through if you have questions about this section. But overall, when you're looking at a reevaluation, it's important to pull together that IEP team and talk about it and say, what are the current needs? Do we have all of the information we need? Can we answer these four questions? And working through that flowchart, making sure you're doing that with enough time to give yourself 30 days to complete the evaluation if anyone on the team or the parent would say that an evaluation is needed.